Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my coding diary. Week five, everyone. Week five. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you what I have to do through week five. And before that, I wanted to do a recap of what I've done starting from week one. Okay, this was before week one on boarding. I got accepted. Week one, I learned about Carol. Beeper path, yeah, I remember that. But I still didn't do the midpoint carol and the checkerboard. I gotta do that soon, but I don't know when. Week three, intro to Python. Wow, that was hard. And then I went to week four, Python control flow. Optional challenge, I didn't do it, but still I did the other one. So I'm just going to leave that. So week five, we're going to learn about graphics. I'm actually really excited. I can't believe we only have two weeks left until this whole program ends. Okay guys, I kind of felt lazy. So I'm actually a bit late. Tomorrow is Thursday and I have a section coming up. So since there are one, two, three, four, five, six things, I know that we're going to do this throughout the section. So I've got to do at least three of this so I won't be left behind throughout the section. Okay, the first lesson, graphics. 35 minutes, okay, that's perfect. Create graphics program, draw shapes on a canvas. Hey, Code and Plays, welcome back to another wonderful week. This is a very exciting week. We get to introduce you to graphics for the very first time. You guys have worked hard. You guys have built up a solid foundation. It's now time to celebrate. And the way we're going to celebrate is we're going to draw some beautiful shapes on the screen using the programming that you know, with the concepts you'll learn in this week and next week together. With those ideas, you'd be able to make this. This is a Python program. It's not all that different from the console programs you've written, of course. Wait, I've played this game before and this is Python? I can make this? Coding is a new way to think. I've seen 20,000 people learn to code. I know it's difficult, especially if you're coming with no background. It's just a really, really hard thing to do. But you're here because you're challenging yourself. You're trying to make your mind more adept at thinking about logic. Uh, you are trying to become that better version of yourself. That in itself is just a really beautiful, respectful thing to be doing. Uh, and then also what I've learned from my research is that the challenge itself is, is sometimes the big takeaway. If you're finding this harder than others, you're probably getting the most out of it. Uh, if you are working harder than others, you're probably more likely to make it deeper into computer science. It is not the case that the people who find it the easiest now are the ones who are going to be able to have the big breakthroughs in the future. Um, often it's the ones who can work the hardest when they hit problems, try and work through that. My big takeaway is just, we're very impressed by you. Uh, you have our respect for working so hard Keep at it, uh, and we'll keep trying to give you all the content we can to make it as easy as possible uh, for you to learn. That is the most beautiful thing I've heard throughout this whole process. Tears in my eyes, literally tears in my eyes. That is so... <sighs> I'm doing a great job. I'm doing a great job. Okay, I finished first lecture. It wasn't really hard. It, it wasn't really that hard at all. It was um, some more basic functions that I have to get used to. I guess practice is the only way for me to get used to this. So let's start with draw flag first. Students in Code and Place are from 150 different countries. Wow. Copy that. Um, but I gotta know where to find the middle? No, okay. Calculate the top left of the square. That's what we did. It's 450 wide. I just um, divided the height into half. Let's see if it's correct. Oh, it is, it's right. I don't know if I solved it correctly, but they say I'm right, so going to the next question. Box row. 
Let's practice making graphics with lots of repeated elements. This will help us get familiar with working with multiple shapes and pixel calculations. Guys, I couldn't figure it out. It's really late now, so I'm going to head off. I feel like I'm thinking it too hard. Also think that it, it's a very simple um, function, but I just don't know how to use the, I just don't know how to use the conditions yet. So I think that's why I'm having a hard time doing this one, but um, yeah, so I'm just going to think more to solve it. I'll see you guys tomorrow at the section. Hey, good night, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It is almost time for my section. So I'm going to prepare for that. I have like three minutes left. Hi. Hello. How are you feeling? I'm feeling much better now. Thank you. That's great. Let me give it a minute for everyone to join. How are you guys feeling today? This is our week five already. Wow, one more week and we're done. I know it's crazy. I'm really fly. How do I generate a random number from 20 to 50? Okay, so whatever the number in here. Oh yeah, Sarah, thank you too for typing in that. Yeah. So what? she told us to do is figure out how to make the circles first and then how to put the random colors right yeah i'm just saying to you i i'm, I'm sure like we have to use the oval one but mm -hmm. i like your poster hill you're right i think the x and y and it has to be some something to do with the circle size yeah they want those better as well that's perfect before creating an oval you have to create a rectangle first is it like it's kind of like that. You have to mm -hmm. think of it as a yeah. like a rectangle, and then the oval comes itself after we just type create oval. Mm -hmm. Where do I put this loop, everyone? Do I put in the main function or draw random circle function? Main. Can I see one finger for main function and two if we I put in draw random? Thank you, everyone. Yes, I need it in the main function. Easy. I know you guys got this. Look at that. Look at you. Okay. And um, I'll see you guys next week for our last section. Okay. Thank you, everyone. That was awesome. This is really fun. I didn't really understand a hundred percent, but yeah, isn't this so cool? Let me clear things up a bit. Run it. Yay! This is so nice. I love my section. This was so exciting. So I'll show you what I what I did. I did draw a flag. So I did this, but I don't remember how I did it. I just calculated inside. I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to calculate it here. <laughs> I think what you should have done mm. was instead of 450, you write canvas width. And then instead of 150, you do canvas height divided by two. I don't know why, but I'm still having a hard time using this. Divide by two, good. Try it again, yeah. Oh, okay. Good job. Okay, now I have to do box row. Let's practice making graphics with a lot of repeated elements. Okay. This will help us get familiar with working with multiple shapes and pixel calculations. Read the next one. Make a line of boxes that show that uh, as shown below, such as the boxes fill the bottom of the canvas. Each box should have a width and height of box size. So it has to be this. So you know how to draw one rectangle, right? Not really. I'm actually having a hard time memorizing. Let's do let's do canvas height minus box size. Canvas height minus box size, and then let's do majimako. Let's do canvas size. Yeah, okay. Now, how do we draw the second one? We have to we use a for loop. For loop. Oh, okay, so this is pretty hard. So I'm gonna make you write it out, the next box, and then after you write out the next box, we're gonna make a for loop. Okay. okay. I thought for loop was going to be the easiest part. Do you want me to help you and do you want, should we do one more problem? Or do you want to think about it? Can you tell me? Because I want to okay. listen to the... The, the event. 
didn't do it. What happened? Is it I plus box size or is it I times box I size? I times plus. Oh. Okay. That's really a hard concept, right? Yeah. But do you understand how easy it is to use the variables? It's so powerful, right? It's very powerful, but I'm not used to it yet. Okay, guys, status report. Okay, so I was pretty busy for the past few days, so I didn't really have time to focus. Here's what I did so far. Yeah, I am still behind. I have to listen to the lesson. I have to do these two questions, but since it's optional, I don't know if I'll do it because the optional questions, as you can see, I couldn't really do it. I mean, I might do it someday, but I couldn't do it because it's so hard. The box row JK helped me and thankfully week six hasn't come up yet. So I'm going to listen to the lecture today. Um, and yeah, I've got to start editing the videos. So let's learn about functions. 60 minutes, that's very doable. Let's go. Define functions that take that take parameters. Define functions that return values. Return values. Okay, let's see. Good morning, Code Plates. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Yeah. We're back for another wonderful day of learning Python. Join us, and we're going to learn about one of the most important fundamental concepts in okay. all of programming: how to pass parameters and give back return values. It's like the advanced course on how to write really mature, wonderful functions. Um, okay, guys, so um, I was listening to the lecture, but as Professor Chris said, this part is very advanced and we have to focus. We have to listen to it very carefully. It's possibly one of the most important things if you want to become that really wonderful program that I know you are capable of becoming. But it's also a pretty hard one to learn. So I'm going to ask that you guys focus really hard on this lecture. I'm going to do my best to be as clear as possible because this is one of those tricky concepts that's just crucially important. That's what he said. I want to take a bit of time to uh, focus on this a bit more carefully and try to go over it as much as possible until I understand. Because if I don't get this, I won't get week six. So I'm gonna set this aside for a bit. I think at one o'clock, 1 a.m. in Korea time, there is going to, yes, there is going to be, I'll show you guys. In 48 minutes, there is going to be Monday mornings with Chris for week six. I'm actually pretty excited because I didn't know this exists. Um, so yeah, he's been doing this for several times, but I had no idea. And let's see what Professor Chris is going to say for week six. Recording in progress. Good morning, Code in Place. Uh, while we're warming up, you guys know the field. Why don't you tell us uh, your name and where in the world you are? Uh, Bulgaria, Italy, South Korea, San Jose, Greece. Uh, and so this will be your final chance to meet with your group of students and your section leader. It won't be the end of learning. And then the other reason that this week is exciting is the content you're learning. Uh, because we think they're the most expansive, important concepts to learn at this point in your journey. And then that's a lot. You know, we've got listen dictionaries as our last week's topic. We've got final projects coming up next week. And we'll, you know.